Hi Year 5, it's great to be back again for another Monday History lesson. Um, today we're going to look at identifying key roles in Anglo-Saxon society. But before we start, I want us to think about these questions. How was Anglo-Saxon England divided up? And what were the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms? Once we know the different kingdoms, we can try and think about the different people who would have lived within them. So let's look at the next page and let's look at the, the different kingdoms. There were seven in total, I'll read them for you. There was Northumbria, Mercia, East Anglia, Essex, Kent, Sussex and Winchester. Now looking at these kingdoms, you might recognise some of these names. So let me show you um, a modern day counties map as well. There's modern England and the counties. Pause the video for a minute and see if you can see any similarities between them. Okay, so as you can see, even today, there's still an area called Sussex, we know because we're living in it. Um, we've also got Kent, we've got Essex, and so the Anglo-Saxons left a real legacy on our language and our geography as well. Um, let's carry on now and let's think about what it might have been like as an Anglo-Saxon settler in Britain and why the Angles, Dukes, um, the Frisians and the Saxons actually came to settle it in the first place. Um, pause the video and have a think about that. So if you think back to last week's geography lesson, where we looked at where the Angles, Jutes, Saxons and Frisians came from, we had the reasons why they came as well. And if you can remember, here are a few of them, those low lying areas flooded. And so these people wanted to come and settle. They wanted to, to be part of a land where they knew that they could farm and be safe. Um, so they wanted to set up you know, life there permanently. They wanted to have their families there. They wanted to grow their crops there. Um, and so, if we use that now as a basis to think about um, those people, they moved into um, those different regions and um, they had to kind of work alongside the people who already lived there. They had to, to abide by their rules. And over time, they actually created new rules, um, Anglo-Saxon laws, which we'll explore in, the, in another lesson. Um, let's just have a little look at the different roles in that Anglo-Saxon society. So by society, I mean the group of people known as the Anglo-Saxons. And by roles, I mean the different sort of levels that you would have in that society. So whether you would have people who were rich and in, in charge and whether you would have the opposite people who um, were ordered about, perhaps, and maybe the different jobs within that. So let's start at the top. Each king, each kingdom, sorry, had a, a kuning. So that's a kunig, that's an Anglo-Saxon word. It was a king who ruled the kingdom. And at various times, the kings of the kingdoms claimed that they were the Bretwalder or the over king of England. So you might have heard of a king called King Offa or maybe Alfred, uh, King Alfred the Great. They were Bretwalders and they, they ruled all of the different kingdoms, all of the seven kingdoms. Um, but sometimes the, the perhaps the, uh, the king of a particular region might... Um, decide that he wanted a bit more power. And so they did fight amongst each other as well. But the Bretwalder had overall control of the kingdom and was um, the one who established rules. Let's look at the other um, people in the kingdom. So the other members of society. So we've got thanes um, next to the king. So thanes, that's how we would actually say it. That's how we'd spell it. They were the rich landowners. So the king would give um, thanes land and those thanes would employ people to work the land. Uh, they would have villages on those lands. And the people who worked the land and the people who lived in those villages would have been freemen or churls. Again, we've got the pronunciation there, so that's how it would be spelt. So um, the churls, the freemen, they would have had a headman in charge of the village and the headman would have reported to the thane and the thane would have reported to the king. So hopefully you can sort of see how it, it works with the king at the top, the thanes underneath, and then the freemen or the churls. Um, so the freemen and the churls, they did all the general kind of jobs in the village and in the towns. So some of them might have traded um, goods, um, some of them might have farmed the land, some of them might have been blacksmiths, um, some might have made pottery. So different jobs like that. Um, underneath the freemen and the churls, there were thralls and the thralls were the slaves and slaves would have been criminals or poor people who sold themselves into slavery. They might also have been prisoners of war because they didn't really have prisons um, back in the Anglo-Saxon time period. So thralls would have worked perhaps on uh, farms or perhaps in the halls of thanes and thanes would have made sure that the slaves were fed if they did their work well. If they didn't, then they would have just kind of been left to fend for themselves, but they wouldn't be able to be employed by anybody because they were a slave. Um, 
So as well as that, we've got other sort of people who would have fitted in this Freeman or this Charles category, but they, they had a particular role in society. So priests and monks. And so we're talking about Christian priests and, and monks. And they would have been able to travel between the different villages um, and the headmen, the thanes would have respected those priests, those monks, and they would have given them a place to sleep and food. And it would have been the same with the storytellers and musicians. They would have been uh, travelled between churl villages and thane halls. And if they performed well, they'd be given somewhere to sleep and they would be rewarded, perhaps with food or with money, maybe. So I hope you're getting a bit of a sense of the different levels of society. So remember, it's king at the top, uh, thanes underneath. Freeman and Charles, then thralls, okay? Those are the main levels. Um, now, just a few other things to note. The thanes could call upon the freemen and the churls um, at any time if the king needed an army, for instance. So if the king needed an army um, to fight maybe one of the other kingdoms or maybe even the invading Vikings uh, later on in the time period, the king would ask the thane to um, try and, and ask the men of the villages, the men of the land that they owned, to take up arms, take up swords and form an army. And you see, if a thane asked a freeman or a churl to do a job, like um, go and fight in an army, then the thane, uh, the churl would have to do it. If the churl or the freeman refused to do a job asked by, asked by the, the thane, then they could actually be thrown off the land. So the thanes really did have control over those churls, over those free, free men. Um, hopefully that kind of makes sense. Another final thing to note is also that it was really hard to move between the different levels of society. So if you were a thrall, and maybe, um, I don't know, if a thrall had children, then those children would be born into being a thrall as well. They wouldn't be able to get out of that slavery very easily. Um, similarly, if you were a churl, um, you were a farmer or a blacksmith, then you would stay as a churl. Okay, hopefully that kind of makes sense. So what activities would each of these groups of people carry out on a daily basis? I want us to now start to think about how these different people might live, what jobs they might do, um, how they might interact with, with each other. So on this page, I want you to look at the statements and the different activities and decide which one relates to which person in society. So ordering a feast to celebrate the defeat that the defeat of a neighbouring king. Who might order a feast to celebrate the defeat of a king? Would that be the king himself, a thane, a churl, a thrall? Have a think about it. Pause the video now. Okay, so on the next page, you can see that we've got the different, um, different answers here. I'll let you read them yourself uh, and you can see if you were right, but just a few other things to note. Um, so women and children in society, they would have been um, churls, as well. So there were male churls and ch children churls <laughs> and women churls. The women would have done things like weaving, um, cooking, perhaps serving. Um, so that, if that kind of makes sense, they wouldn't have been allowed to eat um, in the, the same halls as the men. If the men were, were eating together with the thanes, they would have had to have gone and eat, eaten somewhere else. So the women weren't as respected back in Anglo-Saxon time the Anglo-Saxon time period as today. Similarly, children, they would have had to do lots of different jobs um, working in the village. Um, there wouldn't really have been schools back then. Perhaps if you were a, a, the child of a thane or the child of the king, you would have been educated. But um, children would have done things like collecting eggs laid by the village chickens, um, perhaps um, looking after livestock, making sure that they weren't attacked by predators, that kind of thing. Um, okay. Let's carry on. So now I want you to have a think about a task and you can choose from one of the tasks that I'm going to talk about now. So here's the first task. You can use what you've learned about the different roles in Anglo-Saxon society to draw a picture or a scene involving different members of that society. So think about the activity that you've just done. Think about what you could draw and who you could draw doing what. And then I want you to label the different people that you've drawn and what they do in society. So using this picture as an example, and you can find this picture and more information if you follow the link um, in the resources section on Padlet. Um, I think the link, yeah, there was a link here. But if, uh, if I show you this picture, you can see that there are different people here. So this is a woman. This was perhaps be um, a churl or it might be the thane's wife. This looks like the king, he's wearing a crown and he's seated. I think this would be the thane because he's wearing um, quite rich clothing and he's speaking to the king. 
this looks like it would be a thrall to me because they're wearing not not such nice clothing and they're doing the, the menial tasks maybe looking after the fire and sweeping the floor perhaps this would have been a freeman um, or a churl maybe someone from the village okay so what i would do is i would get my ruler and pencil after i draw my picture and i would draw a, a nice line with my ruler and pencil and then i would label with um the person that I've drawn. So this would be a thrall. And then underneath, I could write a few notes about the thrall. So what can we say about a thrall? You can decide what you would write. Write in four sentences. So we might say, a thrall was a slave um, and they would have slept in a cow shed or barn eating any job. end of the day so they uh, weren't able to have their own houses like freemen and churls they definitely didn't have calls like things and kings so if we draw another line and remember you do this with a pencil and a ruler i could draw the line going to the thane and i might say a sentence about the thane so the thane or a thane was a rich landowner who helped the king rule and um, perhaps they had the power to recruit that means kind of um collect or ask people to be uh, warriors the power to recruit warriors from the people on their land yeah something like that Okay, so you'll have a picture with lots of labels. If you don't want to draw the picture and do the labels, then you can use your acting skills to role play a scene involving the different roles in Anglo-Saxon society. So you could have a bit of fun with this. You could do this with anyone that you live with. So if you've got brothers or sisters, um, maybe you've got parents at home, or you could even just use your imagination and use toys or objects that you have in your house. Um, so could your favourite bear be the king? Could you pretend that he's the king? Could another stuffed animal or stuffed toy be a thrall? Um, how would they speak to each other? Could you create a scene like that? So it would be great to see what you come up with, um, whether you have pictures of um, pictures that you draw yourself or whether that you could take a photo of your role play and send it in to us at the, at the year five email. Okay, I hope you enjoy the task um, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye year five.